In fall 2015, a new original Bones anime was released, directed by Seiji Mitsushima, with the lengthy and hard to pronounce name Concrete Revolution Superhuman Phantasmagoria. Understandably, this was overshadowed by a certain other superhero themed show airing that season, though the people who did continue to watch the show seemed to have many conflicting opinions. Some claimed it was one of the best of the season, while others called it a complete mess which failed at even the basics of storytelling. What's more, a second season was announced for spring 2016, including famous meat vendor Gen Robuchi as a guest writer. So, is it actually worth watching? What about this show could lead to these contrasting opinions? What could we expect from a coming second season? What is up with Concrete Revolution? Oh, while I'm here I can check out what's next season. Oh, these two seem new. Oh, this one's by Bones, Concrete Revolution. wonder if there's a PV. When I watched that PV, I knew that Concrete Revolution, which I will now refer to as Con Revo, because come on, was going to push a lot of my buttons. Colourful art style, superheroes, mechs, a cool soundtrack, basically everything about this design. But Con Revo had a lot more that I wasn't expecting. It's set in a 1970s era Japan, where superhumans of all shapes and sizes are commonplace, and a government organisation called the Superhuman Bureau is set up to regulate, protect and restrict superhumans. From the first episode, it's made clear that you're going for a bit of a ride as it jumps between our main character, Jiro Hitiyoshi, recruiting a new member to the Superhuman Bureau, and several years later, when Jiro has gone rogue and betrayed that very same Bureau. The rest of the episodes serve as kind of filling the gap between these two points in time, while also telling their own episodic stories that themselves sporadically jump around in time. Yeah, you can see how this style of narrative can get confusing quickly, especially with the Japanese dates flashing up randomly. Although, I wouldn't say this is really the focus of Con Revo, and while it may bother some people, I don't think it's essential to follow the timeline to enjoy it. Con Revo is a very thematic anime, as in it explores a variety of themes very deeply, some might say to the detriment of other elements in the show, but we'll get to that later. The main themes are what you might expect, justice, right and wrong, the nature of superhumans and beasts, etc. But what's interesting is that Con Revo asks many questions about these, but doesn't give many definite answers. Sure, there are plenty of answers, but they all conflict here will sound reasonable too, reflecting just how multifaceted and complex these themes are. It feels like the show looks at you, the viewer, and asks, which one of these answers do you think is right? This approach is reflected in a lot of the episodic stories, where it seems like they fix a problem only for time to jump forward and show that the issue was more complex than it seemed, or their solution led to more problems down the road. I don't think the confusingly structured narrative is that big of an issue, since the main focus is the themes explored in the episodes rather than how all the events fit together. Although there can be enjoyment in figuring that out if you are into that sort of thing, and it gets much easier to tell when the series goes on. Hint, the characters' outfits are much edgier in the future. Con Revo can definitely be described as crowded. In a good way or a bad way. The show is filled with references to 70s anime and superhero shows as well as being influenced by ideas in Watchmen and other western media, as well as many cultural and social events in that time period and even some musical references too. The concept of superhumans works simultaneously as a metaphor for nuclear weapons and social revolutionary movements, allowing Con Revo to really play around with what a world full of superhumans might feel like, while keeping these 70s themes of the new post-war generation versus the old, which you would probably recognise if you've watched pretty much any mecha anime from the 70s and 80s. What took them so long? The morons? Stupid adults? The crowded nature also extends to the cast, with loads of different characters, super and not, spread across the various time periods. So, Con Revo is a thematically focused, crowded anime. Does it actually pull this off? Some may be dissatisfied with the lack of clear viewpoint on the nature of justice, though there is a second season on the way, and part of the point is that there is no clear answer that fits everyone. I think the show is successful, if a bit messy in exploring these themes in a variety of ways, though with it being an episodic show, some of the standalone stories are better at this than others. The richness of the world, with its many characters and cultural references, really enhances this aspect of the show, as you can do a lot of digging into the foundation and get a lot out of it, or just lie on top and take it all in. The world of Conrevo has everything, from time-stopping leopard people, to magic so advanced it's indistinguishable from technology, to a completely normal family that happens to be immortal. Everything is well-designed and visually distinctive, some might even say it's over-designed, but I'd say it's awesomely vibrant and interesting. This coupled with the time-jumping narrative creates a whole history that feels vast and real. If you're not interested in justice and don't care for the world the show constructs, then I don't think Con Revo will satisfy you outside of a nice art style. The animation has some amazing moments, it being bones and all, 
but for the most part it's pretty standard, and if anything suffers from the messy and crowded nature of Conrevo, I would say it's the characters. The main character, Jiro, works well enough, since his personal development of struggling to hold on to a naive definition of justice, causing him to have to keep redrawing the lines between good and evil, fits directly into the themes. Most of the episodic or minor characters are developed about as much as they need to be, with some being a bit more memorable than others. However, there are some fairly important characters who are either underdeveloped or not developed well, making them seem a bit flat or of questionable motives. Of course, this can be solved in the second season, but it's still an issue for this season in particular. The layout of Conrevo is undeniably fairly messy, a word I've used a lot, so I'll be more specific. At the beginning, the time skips can be disorienting and can be hard to identify when they happen. Some events are left open-ended to be closed up in a flashback when relevant in a later episode, which does help connect things up, but can also be a bit confusing and unsatisfying. With so many characters and references in any given episode, it can be difficult to follow everyone's motives, which leads to some of the issues I previously mentioned. Like, I'm pretty sure a big character motivation was in the preview for the last episode, but then not mentioned at all in that episode? And Conrevo also tells you a lot of information about characters visually, and generally does this well, but some things can be hard to notice or lost in all the noise. Personally, if you haven't noticed, I really like Conrevo. In general, I'm happy if my shows just have a lot of style, and that's what I was expecting from Conrevo. So I was pleasantly surprised to find it had a lot of substance to do as well, and I'm a sucker for non linear narrative. The flashy designs and cool art style were what got me interested in the series, but the interesting narrative, thematic discussions were what made me love the show. Though while there is a lot I personally like about Conrevo, it does have aspects that make it difficult to give a blanket recommendation. The first few episodes can be a bit hard to penetrate, as the time jumping is at its most prolific in these parts. Obviously this kind of narrative isn't for everyone and has some weak moments where it's difficult to tell what exactly is going on and how it's important, and can sometimes sacrifice understandability for spectacle. Outside of Jiro and one or two others, there isn't any deep development of the characters, which can make them seem underutilised, and even Jiro verges on just being a mouthpiece for matter discussion at some points. The rich world building can lead to a lack of focus on any particular event, making some plot threads seem abandoned or irrelevant, even if they appear significant at first. And the sea of cultural references and inspirations Conrevo swims in can definitely be hard to navigate, and distracting at times. Like I've mentioned, it's a bit messy around the edges, but I think there is a beautiful thought-provoking show in there with a lot to say. If you're looking for an understandable and focused plot, then this isn't sure for you. If you're up for thinking about the themes, then you better be interested in the word justice. If you just want to be wowed by some cool sequences and pretty effects, then there is some of that here, but there's a lot more to think about. I guess a recommendation would have to go, if you watched One Punch Man last season and thought, hey, these themes of heroes, villains and justice which the show dabbles in are pretty cool. I'd like to see them explore deeper, perhaps in a 1970s Japan super stylistic setting. With a centaur mech? Then Con Revo is the show for you. It's an ambitious show still with a lot to prove, and I look forward to seeing if it can when its second season airs in spring. The series is licensed by Funimation in North America. You can stream Concrete Revolution on Daisuke in most places, on Funimation if you're in North America, Hulu in the US, and Anime Lab in Australia. And you'll probably find the second season in the same places when it airs. Stupid adults!